Hi, glad you could join me. I'm Annette Sherman. This is Community. I, um, I think most of you are probably aware that I have been hosting and producing radio and TV shows in this community for more than, oh gosh, more than 40 years. Over those years, my programs have supported the endeavors of thousands of worthy, not-for-profit organizations and individuals who provide special services and entertainment to the Sarasota area. Community, my current commercial-free TV show that you are watching, continues to do exactly that. And I'm frequently reminded how much our large and devoted audience appreciates what we do by their many complimentary communications and comments and the fact that we are usually totally booked a week or two after we come back from summer vacation. And I'm proud and happy about all of that. However, I must admit that my greatest professional pride and joy is derived from the creation, existence, and significance of Community Video Archives. Now in its 27th year, I'm happy to report that CVA has produced over 160 videos. They're video biographies, by and large, of outstanding living Sarasotans chosen for induction into the CVA Hall of Fame. Now these videos are available for borrowing, just like books from Sarasota, any Sarasota County Public Library and they're sourced and preserved by the U.S. Library of Congress. An individual's induction into the CVA Hall of Fame is often referred to as the most prestigious honor our community can offer. But that's only part of the story. Actually, the mission of CVA is to record and preserve a living history of our community that will inform and inspire countless others. These videos enable us to see and hear and get to know many of the extraordinary people who help make our community the phenomenal place it is. The significance of CVA videos is obvious now, but will truly be measured by generations to come. CVA continues to leave a treasured legacy. Now I'd like to introduce my two special guests. First, Myron Hieronymus Thomas, that's his name. He started working, we started working together actually at radio station WQSA. That was the NBC affiliate here in, in this area in those days. And I became a fan of his because he was so capable and willing to work on projects with me that the station had never tried before. We became good friends. And soon after Jan Wilhelm and I started working on CVA, we asked Myron to join us as producer of the videos as well as editor. And he and his wife, Christy, do consistently excellent and creative work. And they are a joy to work with. They are true professionals. Myron Hieronymus Thomas. Look in there and smile or do mm -hmm. something animated. <laughs> Thank you for being you. Thank you. I, I want to tell everybody why Christy, you're his beautiful wife, and she is a beautiful lady, can't be here today. Would you tell them? Well, we have two babies at home, and they can't. Now, these are furry babies <laughs> with four legs. <laughs> yeah, so they can't be left. Uh, for as long as it was going to take today. One is one, and one is two, and they're not used to being alone for a long period of time. So I think we have pictures of, oh, look at those okay. babies. So the one in front, he is charming Chi-Chi, <laughs> and the one in the back <laughs> is Princess Lily, and she, she's two, and he is one, <laughs> And that's their double-wide cart that they get to ride around the neighborhood in. She'll walk halfway around the block, and then she gets in. He doesn't like to walk in the morning, so he rides all the way around the block. <laughs> and the way these two treat these two little puppies, you'd think that they were actually their children. 
they just so much love and so much care. And they came to, brought them to the studio so I could meet them because I was teasing Myron for a long time. When am I going to meet them? I want to meet them. I want to know them. And they came, and I fell in love. I fell in love because <laughs> all they want to do is love. Yes. They don't bark and they don't make any, they don't do anything that isn't, isn't sweet and wonderful. They are very precious. Just a quick aside on that. Shih Tzus were bred by the Empress of China and the entire purpose of them, it's believed they're a cross between Pekingese and Los Opsos. And they weren't mm -hmm. bred to be watchdogs, they weren't bred to be hunting dogs, they were bred to be held in the arms of the Emperor and the Empress under their robes and be loved and that's their only purpose, and these two are very good at it. <laughs> well, you couldn't ask for better examples of that little story there. They are sweet and precious and wonderful, and I'm glad you have them because I know how much love that you're giving them. Uh, I want to move along to, to uh, uh, Chris Fowler. Um, Uh, when I first met Chris Fowler, uh, um, she was the chairperson, get this, of 12 or 13, yes, that many, major events in this community. I don't know how she did it, but every one of them was thrilled to have her, and she did. In fact, I had, at the time I just met her, I, I had just watched her deftly MC one very important event, looking very beautiful, and completely at ease and in charge. And after the event, I was introduced to her. And I immediately asked her, would you consider chairing the next CVA luncheon? And she looked at me, and she knew the organization. And she said, with a serious, without a grin, she said, yes. And I was going to jump up and down, but it would be, <laughs> you know, and gainly it would look not I have to look calm and, and, oh, I said, that's wonderful. I think I shook your hand or whatever mm -hmm. I did, but I was so happy to have Chris Fowler. That was the first year, and that was over 11 years ago. And Chris seems to get better each year. Now let me officially introduce Chris Fowler. And uh, she is the best at multitasking of any person I have ever met. Competent as she, as competent as she is beautiful, and that's saying a lot because she is very beautiful. Uh, two handsome sons, and we want to see those handsome sons. So they've got them on the screen. That picture is from this Christmas, and uh, my six foot three, oh. fourteen <laughs> year old son Lance is in the black shirt, and my eleven year old son Luke is with him, uh, the lights of my life. They're nice boys, and they should be because they've got a lovely mom and who adores them. But my darling Chris, they're going into their teenage time. And <laughs> <laughs> I saw your eyes close. I don't think the camera was on you at the time. And it is, it is uh, and parents will tell you, it's, it's a difficult time. But see, God is smart, uh, to say the least. By this time, he makes the parent love the children so much they will tolerate all their silliness and all the nonsense and all whatever they're going to do. They're just wonderful kids. And you may, you may get past it and still maintain, you know. Some sanity? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to use the word sanity. I was going to say something about still loving them. But that'll never change. No, it will not. Okay. Uh, I want to go on, and I, we have so much to talk about. Uh, Chris obviously is chairing this upcoming luncheon, and that's what we want to talk about. The upcoming luncheon, which is uh, happening on April the 24th. And it is, uh, as I said a while ago, uh, our one event, I don't think I did say that a while ago, I thought it but didn't say it, the one event we have each year. And it is sold out, it has been sold out each year since its inception. So I'm going to suggest if you'd like to be there, then you need to uh, arrange for your reservation. Uh, okay, uh, the four honorees. Each year we choose usually four. And this year is, is a usual choice. The choices are not usual, but the number is usual. 
four honorees. Chris, uh, you have the, the, uh, the page from Scene Magazine, the March issue of Scene Magazine, has a lovely page, full page ad uh, showing our, it's right here, showing our four honorees. Chris is going to talk about them, and Joe and Michael are going to put that, the, each picture on the screen. So let's start, Joe, uh, with the first picture, please. That is Judge Lee Hayworth, and uh, before stepping down, Judge Hayworth has became one of the most active and productive chief justices in our local history. As well as presiding over 26 years, he helped write foreclosure law and better deal with the crisis that existed. He fortified protection for foster care children and so much more. A true gem of our community. Absolutely an extraordinary judge, and uh, if they didn't have uh, limits, the, the judges can, can work only to a certain age, he would still be there. And he said at one point he would do this job because it helped so many people and it gave him great pleasure to help people that he would do it for nothing. And he said, but I'm glad they realized I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next honoree is? That would be Guy Peterson, and he is the recipient of Florida's highest honor, the gold medal, plus about 80 other awards in his career that has spanned over 36 years. He's acclaimed for his design abilities in bringing many architectural organizations and services to Sarasota, and as a working governing member of numerous architectural organizations. Fabulous people. Each and every one of these four gentlemen. We, we, uh, we used all men this year. We've had all women in several of our past years, so it was only fair to, to <laughs> once in a while have all men. But uh, Guy Peterson is, uh, is an extraordinary architect, and if you read about him, you just will be in awe. He's a gentle and sweet and talented man and uh, extraordinary is all I can say. Number three. Next is Dan Bailey, and uh, Dan has received many awards rec recognizing his extraordinary community service. He's a sixth generation Floridian. And as a renowned land use attorney, he counsels private and public entities regarding Sarasota County planning and zoning, as well as serving on the Patterson Foundation Board, working with other boards and organizations and leadership capacities. I have had more people calling me, and we're almost, we're, I, we have, we're gonna work on the count a little later with, I'm gonna work on it with, uh, with Chris Fowler. Uh, but uh, I've been inundated with people who know the honorees, and we haven't gotten to the last one yet. Uh, and so I would urge you, if you'd like to be at this uh, Community Video Archives luncheon, and it's at Michael's on East. Well, let me, let's get with the last uh, honoree, and then we can talk about it. Chris? Okay. The final honoree is Ian Webb. Um, I've known Ian since actually before he came to Sarasota. Uh, phenomenal gentleman. During his tenure with the Sadler Wells Ballet, he produced many acclaimed works with numerous renowned international dancers. And since 2007, as the Sarasota Ballet Director, he's succeeded in taking our ballet to unprecedented national and international recognition and acclaim. Yes, it's been amazing what's been happening with our Sarasota Ballet. With, under the direction of Ian Webb, uh, just uh, just amazing. And here again, he has a, 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 a large cheering group, if you would. Uh, the ballet is very popular, it has been, but it's even more popular now. Uh, we, as I said earlier, this event has been sold out since its inception each year, and we have to turn people away. We don't like doing that, but we also I have just a certain amount of space. It is at Michael's on East Ballroom. It is on April the 24th, which is a Monday. And the way you can reserve seats now is by either calling me or emailing me. And let's put that number on the screen, those numbers. There is the phone number, 941-365-7052. And it'll remain on the screen for a little while. The email address is very easy, communityvideoarchives at gmail.com. Communityvideoarchives uh, community at uh, gmail.com. Okay, 
Uh, we're going to talk. We have something for you uh, later on, and, and it'll be at our close. It has to do with uh, the number of people, who uh, the, the 160, who have been uh, honored by induction into the Community Video Archives Hall of Fame. And we have a montage that Myron brought at my request uh, that Myron has put together. And you'll be seeing that at the end of the program. And you'll also be seeing that we usually use it at the beginning of the luncheon. Mm -hmm. So it'll be on there again. Uh, the tickets are available uh, now. Invitations have gone out. You, if you are on our mailing list, you should get an invitation. However, sometimes that gets a little uh, mixed up, uh, whether it's the post office or us or both. Uh, but if you don't get the invitation by, uh, well, this is the weekend, by the following weekend, uh, call me. And we'll just either send you another one or take your reservation. Uh, so you want to do that. You want, definitely want to be there, particularly if you know some of these people or know of them. You know that each one is special and we like to give them this kind of honor because it is, as I said earlier, the most prestigious honor the community has to give. Myron, you've been working on these videos, and uh, I love what uh, happens each year, and we're going to do it today after we finish taping the program, sit down and talk about some of the taping and some of the interesting things mm -hmm. that uh, Chris, as the MC and the, the uh, chair, will know about and probably use it in her introduction. Uh, any, any surprises? Well, I don't know that there's any surprise. Everyone has a surprise in their life somewhere. If you keep quiet and let them talk long enough, they'll tell you some <laughs> secrets that they might not otherwise have wanted to tell you. I think one of the things that's very interesting about our honorees this year is that three of the four all grew up in Sarasota. Oh my! So we have an opportunity to get a glimpse of what Sarasota was like 40 plus years ago as they were growing up and they talk about what it was like growing up here in Sarasota. Interestingly enough, several of them's paths crossed going to the same schools and they know one another from childhood days, which is the first time We've ever had that happen. It's just purely coincidental because I had no idea when I when uh, and, and when we we finally passed on the the committee came up with the the uh, agreement on on the selections. I never I never checked that aspect of mm -hmm. them, but it, it is it is uh, fascinating as far as I'm concerned that that the the uh, the variety of people that we have uh, in our Hall of Fame. Uh, and as I said, that we're going to leave, we're going to close with the, with the montage. So maybe we will, uh, Joe and Michael, uh, get me, uh, shorten the, the time that I'm on, and you'll have more time for the montage at the end of the show. Uh, that'll be interesting. Uh, the, there's no question about it that, that uh, I'm thinking about Jane Cook. Uh, and Jane Cook, some of your newer people may not have known Jane Cook, but I'm sure you've seen her name on buildings, on the library, on the new college. And Jane was a very dear friend of mine, and uh, I'm honored to have been her friend because a nicer, sweeter, more gentle, more unassuming millionaires you've <laughs> never met. Uh, and she just was a, 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 an absolutely incredible person. And when Jan Wilhelm and I started, she was one of the first. We tried to get information on her. and We went through everything, web, everything. Couldn't find maybe a line or two. And we, of course, chose her as one of our first uh, honorees. And then she, in those days, we would send, we don't do that anymore, send the, the video before the luncheon so that the, the uh, uh, honoree could look at it. And if they had a problem, now we do it afterwards. In other words, if there is a problem in the, in the video archive, in other words, if we said your birthday was March the 12th and it was actually April the 16th, 
that had to be changed. Well, these things happen. They're human errors. And Myron and Christy will, will make it perfect. Uh, we did that beforehand, and finally, she had a perfect copy of her video. And I called her up, and I said, Jane, uh, how do you like your video? Oh, she said, I love it. Can I get some copies? I said, surely, darling. How many do you want? She said, 36. <laughs> I said, 36. I thought I didn't hear her right. <laughs> oh, she said, no, I want to give one to every member of my family. Aww. And I got some beautiful, I didn't keep them, which is stupid, the letters, the thank you letters from members of her family that had no recollection of her, maybe some pictures, some still pictures. But the joy of this is, and we added something in our uh, newsletter this year, and it's gone but not forgotten mm -hmm. because some of our people have the audacity to die <laughs> and uh, when they're gone they're not forgotten because their video archive remains and as I did with Jane Cook allowed her to be known by so many not allowed her but did that so that she could be known by so many people that would not ever, couldn't know her because she had died before they, they came here, before they were born, perhaps. So that's what's happening here. That's what we do. That's what's important about what we do, is to create a living history of our community. May I make a comment on that, Annette? Sure. I think that what you and Jan started is really a significant program and as I talk to people and explain it to them when we're doing these, I'm surprised sometimes the people who uh, we're doing testimonials that aren't aware of really what our objective and our goals are. It's, as you say, it's not so much about today, it's about the future. Mm -hmm. That whatever format we have these in, they'll be there so that people can see them and grasp the past in the future. But I would like to say to people who are watching, because we put together these elaborate productions and they really tell the story but I encourage people whenever I talk to them it doesn't have to be an elaborate production like we do but if you can take yourself your iPhone or whatever phone you have that has a camera on it today people have no excuse for not having a camera mm -hmm. or even an audio and sit down with your parents your grandparents whoever it is and turn that on and have a conversation with them have them tell you about their life, about growing up. Can you imagine what it would be like if we all had that of our parents? Absolutely. No, I agree with you, Myron. But I also, there's a slight disagreement there. And the disagreement is what you produce is so wonderful to look at. I mean, as, as, as something rather than nothing that you're talking about. Yes, I'm see, just saying to have that in yeah, their, in yeah, their to possession. See, just, I would love to see my mother. I have no pictures of her. I would love to see my dad. I have no pictures of him and, and my family. So that's it. But, but if we were here in the proper time, it was our mistake. <laughs> but I do really believe that what you just said is a nice thing to do and, and a good thing to do because something is better than nothing, just having them speak or having them, mm -hmm. uh, some video of them. But the video, the productions that Myron and Christy make are so wonderful because they're, they're, they're stories that are told, and they're stories from beginning to end. Usually it starts with the birth and goes on. Uh, but they're not, they don't die in the video because they're alive. That's why we're, we're honoring them as, as they are alive. And, but it is so beautifully done, storybook narration, music. Uh, it's just a professional, beautiful job, and I know how much time you take. I remember, and I only have a moment or two. I may, may not have time to tell it. Tell it. You like to start with the, with the baby picture and, and uh, the date and usually with some other indication of the birth. But I think you, didn't, you couldn't find a baby picture and couldn't, couldn't uh, start it with that. So you went to the, to the Herald Tribune and you got the newspaper for that mm -hmm. day, whatever it was or whatever year it was, and said on this day, and they had the news and whatever, and also so-and-so, so-and-so <laughs> was born. I thought that was so clever, but it's so typical of you, where you use imagination and you use creativity. I don't want to embarrass you, and I hope I'm not, because that's your profession, and you are 
superb at it. Chris Fowler, you are as superb in what you do in taking charge. And nothing is too much for you. Everything is excellent and everything is done, everything that has to be. And you do way beyond the, the simple, it's not a simple job, but the job of MC, the job of, of, of chair person of the event. Because you are, again, uh, an excellent an excellent person. Thank you. It's, I mean, it's an important mission to me because I was a transplant into Sarasota, and I saw the names on the buildings, like you mentioned, Jane Cook. You don't understand the depth of what they gave to our community, and now they're gone, so it provides a vehicle to live the past. And we're out of time. Uh, Three six five seven zero five two. You can call me, but you will not get in because it will be sold out. But please call me or email me. Uh, email, there it is, 365-7052, and the uh, uh, email address is communityvideoarchives at gmail.com. Thank you for everything you do, beautiful Chris Fowler. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do, handsome, wonderful, talented, handsome, beautiful, wonderful, talented, should have been too. <laughs> Myron Hieronymus Thomas, and if Christy was here, your beautiful wife, Christy, for all the assistance that she gives you. Amen. We're, we're out of time. We've got to say bye-bye. Went so quickly. Bye-bye for now. Okay.